Can you tell me about him? Well, he's had a very serious injury, and he hasn't been cleared uh, by uh, the medical people to continue uh, playing right now. And it's, uh, I guess it's just wait and see. Hopefully he recovers. I don't have any of the detailed medical stuff for you, but he's not ready to uh, continue right now. Um, he's one of your better prospects. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a really weird circumstance, and uh, nobody can explain it uh, why these things happen. But hopefully, you know, there's still some small hope that uh, he can continue. But we'll have to wait and see what the doctors say. To him this summer, he said, Other guys play with like this compromise, like Brian Bernard. Yeah. So like, it has, like, you can't play. But I mean, he and Bernard was a defenseman as well. So I guess that's a defense this whole time. He said he yeah. could see straight ahead. He could peripherally could see the front of yeah, and I don't know what the prognosis is for uh, whether it's going to improve or not. I, I, I can't tell you. Safin, did he get hurt in the Four Nations? Safin got hurt at, uh, I don't know if he, I don't, I don't think he got hurt at the Four Nations. He got hurt in the lead up to the Four Nations with the camp. Um, he's going to be held out uh, for the first two or three days for sure. It's unlikely we'll see him in the competitive environment uh, next week with the games. Uh, he, our hope is he'll be ready for main camp and uh, full goal. It's a hip flexor injury. Okay. And, and is there other, are there players who come here like on the trial, like Esposito, he's obviously related to Mark. He's been at an orientation camp once before for the owners. Is that why he's back? Or? Well, he played, uh, he played in Grand Rapids last year and uh, we were looking for, uh, he was looking for a place. And uh, so we came to an agreement to have him come here and uh, we're familiar with him, we like him, and uh, he plays with speed, he plays with tenacity, so uh, we're, we're glad we have him here. It's two young players, uh, first year pros in Yamamoto and uh, Bouchard. Uh, what's the organization's stance on starting first year pros in the NHL? And, and I know what the history is, but how would you generally oversee that? How would you like it to go? Well, I mean, you, you earn what you get, and if they're ready to play, uh, this league's trending younger and younger, and uh, if a young player is ready to play, uh, there's, there will be room for him. Um, sometimes you have to do some uh, lineup juggling to make room, and sometimes that can take a week or two, but uh, um, if, if a young player is ready to play, then, then they'll be on the team. The question you guys always made is how much is he going to play at the NHL level compared to where he play somewhere else? Yeah, it's he's on your roster, but if he's not he's sitting for the first three or four games and not playing. Then. Yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, there's uh, one theory is is the player too good for junior? I mean, Kyler is a different scenario now because he can go to Bakersfield. But if you look at a Bouchard or a McLeod, is he too good for junior? Then you can, like we did with Alish Hemsky uh, many years ago, um, you know, you can have this year as a development year and you can play him and sit him. Uh, at times, but um, but really, what happens with uh, with these young players is they come in and uh, they have to prove they're ready and they have to prove that it's the best thing for them and for the team. Um, uh, with with a Kyler Yamamoto, you can see that there might be room on the wings, um, and uh, it's probably an area that we can use some scoring. But again. It, if, if he doesn't make it right away, it doesn't hurt him to go to the American League for a while either. So the same would be true for Ethan Bear. You could use a guy that can shoot the puck off the back end. You could use a little bit of offense on your back end. Uh, because he's been a pro now, uh, is the scenario different for him to crack this lineup? Well, I, I think it's a little different because he's had a year pro, but uh, he had a little taste last year. We all saw him have some success. We all have, saw him have some trying moments. And uh, he'll have to, again, prove that he's ready to play and that you can sustain it. You don't want a player to come up here and play for two games and then drop off. Um, you've got to be able to sustain it. And is he ready to sustain it? He'll answer that. Uh, there's a lot of pressure with high first round picks be on the team. You guys, from out, I guess outside fans say, oh, he's a top ten player and should be on the team. You guys have to weigh expectations. I don't think so. I mean, uh, I, I assume you're referring to yeah. Evan. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a late birthday, so he's had the extra year of junior, so he's only got one year of junior left if he doesn't make this team. But uh, defense is a hard position to play. We've seen lots of young defensemen come up and struggle, and, and uh, he's going to have to, again, he'll get his feet wet at rookie camp, he'll get his feet wet during the exhibition season, I presume, 
uh, if he shows well at rookie camp, and then uh, the decision will be made. But it is a difficult position to, to play. Say when you were talking about Hempstead, you could break him in as a winger and play him some games and not play him later. Yeah, because you have 14 forwards, uh, 13 forwards, it's easier to, defense is a little harder, I think, to, you certainly don't want Evan Bouchard sitting here till Christmas playing eight games. Yeah. You, you, want, you want him playing somewhere if he's not going to play here. Uh, your, your roster, since you're over in Europe, does your roster still have to be ready by the start of the NHL yeah. so Well, I think you get a, you probably get, I, I don't know the rules exactly. Yeah, your first game is an exhibition. Yes. The other league is, the league is starting up with games on the same day you're having an exhibition. Yeah, we, we start on on the third and the league starting then um, I think they generally they give you some leeway with an extra goalie or something like that but uh, uh, and then you bring people over there and then you can make your paper moves so uh, like you wouldn't be down to 23 guys to like well I don't know that's a question for Peter and Todd what they're going to do it's so unfortunate that you can't have your, your college players here since they're at the prospect you know and you have to go back and play college like maybe they play really good at the yeah that's that's just the way it is with college players. They can't they can't attend training camp, and that's just that's uh, every team has that. Every team has good players in college, and you'd love to have them here for a week or two, but you can't do it. So just a comment on uh, William Legacy. We saw a lot of growth uh, this year in overseas, and just he wants to come to uh, Baco next year. Just a thought on his development. Uh, he had a tremendous year last year in the, in the Swedish Elite League. He played. 19, 20 minutes a game. He played a lot of important minutes. He's a defending defenseman, so he's not going to provide offense. Uh, he's really, really competitive, and uh, his skating has improved, so I anticipate that he's going to have a strong showing here at camp. Since you're only playing with Calgary at the beginning, is that a downside? Because the tournament is a bit different if we play two other teams as well. I don't think it's a downside. We decided that uh, uh, we wanted to have everything closer and it made sense for us uh, both Calgary and us decided that we, w we would prefer this. We have the game with uh, Nate and McEwen too so it's a little different um, probably not as, it's not going to be as much hockey I guess it's one less game really um, which which doesn't make that much difference. What about a guy like Ryan Van Strahlen who kind of took the unconventional route from Carlton showed well in Wichita what are you hoping to see from him? Well, uh, those players uh, are working their way up. Uh, it's great to see uh, particularly Canadian college players get an opportunity, and uh, we'll see what he, what he shows here. How deep would you say this group of prospects is, is and uh, how you know, are you anticipating some pretty difficult decisions coming up? Well, I, I think we have a deep group. I think uh, when you look at uh, the whole group, not just the group that's here, but the, the eight college players we have as well, I think it's a deep group. Uh, I think we obviously got some uh, high-end players in Yamamoto and Bouchard and McLeod and, and Safin's got high-end skill. Uh, uh, Maximoff uh, is really skilled scoring goals. So I think we have a really solid group here, but you don't know when they're going to be ready. And, uh, and this is what we come to these camps for, and they put in the work all summer, and we'll see where they are.